A River Runs Through It was a 1992 film based on a book by Norman MacLean. My dad had always instilled in me a love of fishing, and this movie transfixed me with the rhythm of the rod movement and actually seeing a fish rise to grab your fly in the water. That very same year I bought my first fly rod, and for the last 32 years have been practicing this graceful sport knowing I will never be perfect and always with the goal of getting better. I know that when I am fly fishing, I forget about everything else and just enjoy my time on a river that has seen the footsteps of Native Americans, gold miners, and countless fishermen to explore these waters and deep canyons. Join me on a trip to a beautiful section of the American River in California where I hope to see a trout rise once again. Hi everyone, my name is Mike, also known as Flyfisher530. Today I'm off on another adventure and it's to a beautiful river canyon. Uh, it's the middle fork of the American River. It's a beautiful stretch of river. Um, if you don't know where that is, it's in the foothills between Lake Tahoe and Sacramento. Just a gorgeous area. Um, I really think you're going to enjoy this video. We're going to be, my buddy Sean's behind me here, and uh, we're going to be fly fishing the river, hooking up some great food, hopefully have some amazing drone shots of this area because it is a beautiful river section. And so I really think you guys are going to enjoy this video. Stay tuned. We are headed to the Middle Fork of the American River, which originates high in the Sierra Nevada mountain range. We are going to a private section of the river known as the Horseshoe Bar Preserve, and to get there you cross over the highest bridge in California. At 730 feet high, the Forest Hill Bridge was originally built for a planned dam and resulting lake that was never built due to seismic and environmental concerns. We travel through the small town of Forest Hill, which is just across the canyon from where I live. As we near the property, you can see the Middle Fork Canyon experienced a very bad fire which started just upstream of the Horseshoe Bar and ended up burning over 76,000 acres, the largest fire in California in 2022. The scars this fire left on the landscape are immense and it will take decades to recover. The Horseshoe Bar property was severely burned as a result of this fire and although it will take time to recover, it is still a beautiful place to explore and fish. At the top of the property, we pull over to take in the views. Even with the fire damage, this is still a beautiful section of the American River. We travel from what is known as the boxcar run to the camp location on the property. To get there, you cross a ledge road with an amazing view of the river below before ending up at the camp, which to a large part was untouched by the fire due to firefighters who came in to protect this location and a nearby historic cabin. All right, everyone, we have landed at this amazing place on the middle fork of the American River I'm with my buddy here, Sean. You've seen him in previous videos. Um, so we do this usually at least once a year. This year, I think we're gonna go at least two or three trips fishing. Um, we're on the middle fork of the American River, a beautiful stretch of the river here. Uh, they have both rainbows and brown trout in this river. Hopefully we'll catch something this weekend. No, crossed. no guarantees, <laughs> yeah. but uh, we did regardless, yeah, regardless, <laughs> it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. What do you think, Sean? Oh, spectacular. I mean, when you first come down, 
and you look at that river and you see the dam and you see the spillway and you see the river, I mean, it's just breathtaking. It really, really is yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's a great spot. Sean also has a new Tacoma to him, a 2016 that he just bought. We'll probably do a, a little review on that this weekend. It's a beautiful rig, um, awesome rig. And uh, I'm kind of jealous when he's going over these bumpy roads. You know, he has that independent front suspension. <laughs> right. I don't have that with my front axle, but um, yeah, so. Yeah. We'll show you a little bit of that rig this weekend as well, but we're just gonna kind of get our, our camp set up. That's what we're doing right now. Yep. And uh, then probably later this evening, we'll start fishing. We'll fish all day tomorrow, and then we're leaving uh, Monday. So um, I think you're gonna enjoy this video, guys. Stay tuned. All right, so something I never really talked very much about, guys, is my kitchen setup. And this is just an old aluminum camera box uh, my buddy Sean gave me years ago. And I'm still using it to this day. And uh, it's kind of cool because it's super light. It fits in between my ARB fridge right here on the right and the other side of my Jeep here. So it kind of just locks everything in. and. Uh, yeah, by the way, Sean has been inherited my set power, so I'm going back to my ARB. But, um, yes, this, this, this uh, camera box that Sean gave me years ago, he is into photography for quite a while, is super light. It's got these compartments here with walls on each, on each side here. And then, um, you know, I can put up a cutting board up here, some other stuff that I've bungeed in to hold it to make use of this space up on top. And then, you know, I've got soap and um, bottles and uh, I've even got my GCI um, cooking uh, pots and pans down here, foil, of course. Um, my coffee press is right here, various uh, seasonings um, on this side. Have, you know, some metal plates uh, more seasoning, some forks and knives down here. It just uh, allows me to store a lot of stuff in a very compact area, very light. And uh, I've been using this for over two years now. It's worked for me. Someday I might, you know, do goose gear or something like that uh, with drawers and all that more fancy stuff. But this has worked really well for me and I'm super happy with it. Um, I have no real plans to do any changes anytime soon. Um, it just works for me as kind of my overall kitchen setup. And um, yeah, just love this thing. This property is a fly fishing club which requires catch and release and the use of barbless hook flies. There are several tent cabins available if you don't have your own or if you want to bring a guest. A new bathroom with running water is being rebuilt as the original burned down in the fire. While I was there, I was surprised to see the owner, Tom Bardos, who was nice enough to tell me a little bit more about the history of the property. All right, guys, so I am with a very special person here on the Horseshoe Bar Preserve. This is Tom, he's the owner of the property. Um, and Tom, why don't you just describe what this property is all about? Well, the property, if you want a little bit of history, uh, was uh, the corporation that owns the property from the tunnel all the way up uh, to the dam was American Bar Forts Mining Company. And that was founded by Edgar Dow Jr. from Dow Chemical, mm -hmm. from uh, Hiram, Walker Johnson, Ju Hiram Walker Johnson Jr., mm -hmm. who was the son of the governor, and mm -hmm. a few other guys. And they created American Bar Forts Mining Company to mine this property. So as a mining property. Yeah. In the 1800s we're talking? 
Well, they started the, the corporation because mining's been mining since 1850, but it really uh, got took off again in 1920 okay. when uh, the money came in. <laughs> gotcha. But uh, what's interesting, I had a group of uh, students here from the Berkeley College, and I had the head of their geology department here. Mm -hmm. And he was giving a lecture, and I said to him, you know, Tell me about the property. He says, well, American Bar Quartz Mining Company is the richest gold strike in the history of the world. Hmm. And I was like, huh? Yeah. And he said, the reason for it is that not only the quantity of gold is very good, but it has crystalline gold. Hmm. Crystalline gold is a form of gold where liquid quartz mixes with gold, liquid gold, mm -hmm. and it forms a lace-like pattern with of gold and, and uh, quartz. Mm -hmm. And it's used for jewelry gold, and it goes for about twelve to fifteen thousand an ounce. At least wow. it did when it was at two thousand, probably sixteen, eighteen now. Right. But it's very pricey gold. And how many miles of river frontage do you yeah. have? Five miles of river frontage. Okay. And so, guys, this is a fly fishing club, so it's fly fishing only, barbless hooks only, correct? Yep. Catch and release. Catch and release. So, um, but my gosh, this is one of the most beautiful stretches of river I've ever seen. And with the tunnel going through it, tell them a little bit about the tunnel. Well, the tunnel was dug in 1860 to 1868. And they wanted to put the tunnel in so that they could uh, divert the water from going around the horseshoe so they could mine the horseshoe. Right. And I believe they got something like half a billion dollars out of the horseshoe in gold. Wow. And so it, it took them eight years to do it. Yep. And they did it with hand chisel, hand drills, and black powder. The wow. dynamite hadn't been invented in 1860. Wow, that's crazy. So that tunnel is the water is about 50 feet deep, mm -hmm. and it's another 20 plus feet. So it's about 80 feet by whatever the width is, and I think it's probably 15 to 20 feet wide. Right, and it goes down, and then beyond the tunnel, they had to blast out even more because they didn't want it to back up. Wow. So the lake is about 75 feet deep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah, that's the interesting thing. This property, so it has a, an amazing campground. I'll show a little bit of that on this video as well, the campground area. You have these uh, tents here you can stay at, correct? Right. And uh, they're putting in a new restroom. A major fire came through the area two years ago now, Yeah. about a uh, mosquito fire and uh, but luckily the campground area here is preserved and the property you guys can see is still gorgeous. It's a gorgeous area, even though a fire came through the area. Um, there's a, an old cabin up above. What's the story yeah. on the cabin? Barrett House was built in around 1850 to 1860. And it was a general store, mm -hmm. a uh, hotel, which was really a bunkhouse. Yes. And it was also a brothel. Right. So miners could come up there, buy their supplies. Yes. Drink get laid, <laughs> right? get drunk, and then sleep it off in a, in a bunkhouse. Right. And it was a pretty decent sized bunkhouse. And the last time it was rebuilt was in 2000, uh, 1932. Yes. And uh, it's got a jail underneath it for anybody that's around. Really? It. Yes. I didn't know that. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. It's kind of cool. Yeah. We're going to be, once I get through with the campground and the solar power, the Barrett House is my next project. Mm -hmm. So this is a membership-based club, guys. I guess if you're interested, go to the website, right? Fly yeah, Horseshoe Bar Preserve. Horseshoebarpreserve.com. Just look it up, Google it. You'll, you'll get right to the website. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful property. I've come here. I live fairly close, so it's easy for me to get here. But um, man, if you live in Northern California or even beyond, if you want to be a member of a great fly fishing club, this is an awesome place to be. Yeah. Well, Tom, thank you, sir, hey, for, for you. your time Appreciate today it. to yeah. talk about Horseshoe Bar. Again, guys, this is a beautiful, beautiful property. If you're interested, go to horseshoebarpreserve.com. It's one word. And uh, Tom, thanks again. We'll thank look forward to seeing you again you. out here. All righty. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. After the interview with Tom, we took a break from setting up camp to just take in the views and have a cold drink in the warm sun. Afterwards, we took a few minutes to go over Sean's new Toyota Tacoma truck. All right, guys. Well, I am with my buddy Sean here, who has got a new to him Taco, a 2016, correct? Yep. Gen 3 Tacoma. Yeah. And uh, love the color on this thing. Um, 
Tell us a little bit about it, Sean, because it's a pretty cool rig. Yeah, this is the uh, 4x4 and uh, TRD 4x4. And uh, I just did a few modifications, nothing extravagant. Uh, went ahead and just wanted some lights on the front. Well, this bumper right here, uh, it's made for these particular rigs, which will go on any rig that's a, a taco like this. Uh, really nice, lights up real well. And then, you know, of course, did the spoiler on it. Then just upgraded tires, didn't want to go too big. Um, went ahead went uh, with the Falcon Wild Peak tires and just went a little bit wider one size. Yep, nice. Yep. Yeah, it works. And then if you're on a budget, uh, this works really great. It bolts up really nice with the uh, tacos. Uh, it's at uh, Harbor Freight mm -hmm. and it was like 119 or $109. Nice. And it, it's just solid as a rock, really great, great size, not oversized, works really well. And then uh, I did a backseat delete on mine. And upon doing that, it gave me a lot more room in the back. And then also what I've done is put the molly, the molly packs in the back on each seat. Right. To give you a, a different things that you can get to, bear yes. spray and what have you, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Nice. And Yeah. And then you can, if you use these, they work really well because they mix and match as far as fitting inside and then the totes work Yeah, the really, seat really delete good. gives you a lot of room, doesn't it? It does. It Way gives you more a room. Lot of room. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. And you can spend a thousand dollars and put a hard surfaces in by goose. Right. But I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars. I spent it someplace else. I thought of my yeah. Rig, no, you know, I, it's all about for, economy. Yeah. And yeah. So it works really well. Up on top, what do we got? And then on there? up on top, what this is here, these really come in handy. Yeah, too. the little step things yeah, the off step the tire. Yeah, step right here. This is just a lot of odds and ends, small things that you would use, but it's got the shower, solar shower in it couple of rods, tape, clips, you know, yeah. clamps and that kind of stuff. And then the fishing gear in here. And then I do have a set of uh, uh, sockets, mm -hmm. you know, that we all can use. Have some things to lock things up if we need to lock things up. Right. Cables and stuff like that. Yeah, if you have a bear locker and you want to lock up. Yeah, exactly. Can, yeah. And then uh, have a hammock, you know, hammock up here, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Collapsible water bag. You know, things like the small items that you may have to use for siphoning gas or yeah. whatever the case may be. But that's kind of it. And then, of course, have uh, um, uh, fishing gear right. uh, as far as waders and boots and all that go up there. So that's what this is. Yeah, it's nice. So all your wet stuff won't yeah. be inside the rig and yeah, stuff. Yeah, closes but... down. And what I did was I have Yakima racks. And with the Yakima racks, I went ahead and I used this. And this right here is great because it goes in your closets mm -hmm. for shelving. Mm -hmm. And all I did was go ahead and paint it, uh, fuse two pieces opposite each other, yeah. and it gives it a little bit more uh, uh, stoutness, yeah. you know, yeah. to, to mount to, and you've got all sorts of places to hook things and what have you. Yep. It works out really great. All right, let's go to the back. Yeah. And then I didn't want to do a carpet, didn't want to do a carpet system on mine. I wanted to have my truck if I needed it. Right. And so what I did was I just built this platform like this and carpeted it. Yep. Uh, Cody did that on his Tacoma. Um, yeah, and it works great. Yeah. And then I make sure you measure high enough to get be able to get your totes in and out, whatever totes you're going to use. Right. But it really works great. And then um, and then I cut the corner off a little bit so it makes it a little bit wider to get in. Right. Works great. And uh, yeah, my water, my two uh, five gallon water jugs are up there behind the black thing. And uh, then uh, it leaves this space open so that it gives you some space to put more stuff if you needed to yeah. quickly, or if you want to go ahead and change what what is whatever. This? this is also, again, from uh, the uh, tool place uh, I just had. Harbor mentioned. Freight. Thank you, Harbor Freight. And I put this down there and then uh, it's diamond it's that diamond plate pattern yeah but it's rubber yeah and that's what this is flipped over it's a bad knees old guy you're right so it makes nice of getting in there right yeah getting in and out of the tailgate yeah right. i could see yeah. that yeah and then yeah i've got bad knees too. have an extra pad of this left over just use it for getting in and out uh to keep keep the yeah, area clean. for where you're stepping down yeah and then yeah. this particular one right here um uh, was the the Gi bowl that's made for Toyotas and this particular model that leaves these open. Oh, okay. Just goes right in. And then the way this is made, it has more of a cushion. Gotcha. Yeah. 
and again, nice. yeah, and then nice can, protection. Yeah. Yeah. And you can set stuff up. You the got way your you receptor need. water jug there. Right. Yep. Yep. And then, like I said, these work really good. These are all uh, lanterns and Lucy lights in here. Yep. Which guys, you might want to check this real quick. These are great. Solar. So, yeah, the solar. Pull them apart. Yep. And then you can hang them anywhere, and and uh, you get uh, eight hours out of a full charge on them. Yeah. So we throw them on the dash as we drive. Mm-hmm. Works great. Yeah. Yeah, just throw them on the dra dash to charge them up as you Yeah, drive. they collapse and they right. just all... You don't turn them on while you're driving. Uh, no. Uh-uh. And right. then you can get these if you have the Yakimas. I, had a, I have a kayak. It helps getting the kayak up for one guy. Yeah. You can use it for a lot of things. Dry towels like this is just a garbage bag hanging off of it. Right. So they come in handy. It just unscrews here and slides right in. And that's a Rhino USA trash bag, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. With the, uh, it's a nice fabric on it, and yeah, I like a, the reflector too. That's really cool. Yeah, but it's got pockets and reflector on it. Yeah, it's you know I don't have that set up yet for a tire on the back of my rig. Right. But that's what it's for. Yeah. But yeah, it comes in handy. Yeah, Sean's just starting out getting his rig set up, yeah. guys. So I mean, it's all a process of learning what works for him. Right. And you know, not spending a ton of money at the same time, right. which we're all trying to do. So. Yeah, and cool. then this this box right here, yeah, it has a valve. Uh, pressure valve on it mm -hmm. and it's dust dust proof waterproof I did spend the money on that and all mm -hmm. my recovery gear is in there I oh, gotcha that's where I put all that in there yeah. nice and then my gas cans can go on here if I want You're right I didn't bring them but I, I they can go on there yeah and then I did that back seat delete this is the cooler area yep which works in the battery yep fits in perfect nice you know keeps it clean and again this is a molly pack in the back that has right. different stuff uh, underneath, underneath here too, right behind that. Yep, yep, yep. Wall weather, all weather band radio, that kind of stuff. Nice, very good. Yep, love it. All right, Sean. Well, thank you, sir, yeah. for giving us a walk around. It's yep. a beautiful it. rig. I love the color, and um, yeah, we'll be taking this out on a lot more trips this year. Got this. Yeah, year, it's guys. definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. And uh, if you're doing like a kind of a budget thing. Yeah. You know, I spent it on the tires and, you know, the hook bumper in right. the front is where I put the money in. Because yep. those are the two things I really wanted. Yep. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, I had some of it. And then uh, I bought this to make sure that it was going to be a good one. Right. And Very that's cool. it, man. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sean, for that. Appreciate yep. it. You got it, man. During the late afternoon, we began to get ready for the evening and dinner. We were doing prepackaged chicken chili verde quesadillas grilled on the Tembo Tusk Scottle. We added cheese and tomatoes to the flour tortillas, which were browned up on Sean's flat griddle stove. Man, the smell was incredible and the view was hard to beat. Then we have our... Uh... All right, guys. Well, Sean did a fantastic job. I did a small part of cooking up the meat, but he really did a great job on these quesadillas. Made the salad, got my Modelo. <laughs> Sean's got a Coke. I'm doing Coke. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> forgive him for that, but um, just came out with a great meal, great view. Um, man, it's just been an awesome day.
Well, good morning, everyone. Um, we just had a great day getting here yesterday. As you've seen in the video, the middle fork of the American River is just a beautiful, beautiful section of river. Um, you know, we hope to do some major fishing today. And, uh, you know, I'll just pan around here so you can see the river. We uh, definitely want to fish probably downstream from here. There's what they call the lake, which you've seen in the videos, the area downstream of the tunnel. Um, so we'll probably be fishing that later today. We might fish right off here in the morning, right off the campground, because this is a good spot as well. Um, but uh, I'm also hoping in a little bit, we might have rafters coming down the river here. So if they do, I'll try to get some video of that. They actually go through this tunnel behind me which is crazy to me that it's a really narrow slot that they go through to get into the tunnel. Um, I think it's like 10 to 12 foot wide uh, section that they have to get through, uh, through the, through the um, rocks. And then they drop through a, a, a waterfall and then into the tunnel. And that waterfall, it's, it's not the tallest of things, but it's, it's enough that it can flip rafts pretty regularly. So it's not uncommon to see rafts getting flipped, people getting thrown out of the rafts, and then they float through the tunnel out of the raft. And on the other side, as you've seen in the video, there's like a big lake, what we call a lake here, but it's just a big expanse of the river, very calm area, and um, it's easy for the rafters to kind of get back in their rafts, get settled before they head further down the river. But uh, if you ever want to do a really cool rafting trip, Middle Fork of the American River is a really neat section to do. Let's see, so yeah, we're gonna get breakfast going today. Uh, we're gonna do some eggs and some maple sausage links, which are my favorite, and just enjoy the coffee this morning and uh, get things going, so stay tuned. All right, so Master Chef Sean here. Oh, we use that term loosely. We do use that term loosely actually no so we've got the um, sausages burned to a crisp and then we've got the uh, hard we won't say who was cooking those yeah. um and then uh yeah and then uh we got the scrambled eggs going so yeah breakfast looking pretty good but yeah another adventure here on the river today and hopefully we catch some fish in a little bit we'll see but uh, man, we're gonna just enjoy the view, have this breakfast this morning, and, uh, and then get going. All right, guys, here's our breakfast. Came out great. There's our view. Look at this bill. <laughs> Think you got a little extra there? Yeah. All right, well, we're gonna go give it a shot. Um, you've already seen Sean. I did some drone shots of Sean down in the water. So we're gonna try by the campground here first, and then maybe later this afternoon, we'll uh, go down to what we call the lake down below the uh, tunnel. But beautiful day out here, just a gorgeous day. Um, so let's see what happens. All right, so we're gonna see how we do here by the campground. I started out in the morning using my 11 foot long switch rod, which is a fly rod that performs both like a regular fly rod and a two handed spay rod due to its longer length. If you want to learn more about it, check out my Pyramid Lake video at the link above. This river is quite wide and being able to cast some distance definitely has its advantages with a longer rod. Sean was using a regular fly rod and as you can see here, he was on a sandbar that allowed him to get further out into the river. The fast water here is no joke and you need to be careful not to fall in and be taken downstream. I also find at my age a wading stick is essential to improve balance walking over slippery rocks. To catch fish here you need to pay attention to your indicator and with barbless hooks you cannot allow any slack line once a fish is hooked. Alright, we've been fishing maybe for about an hour here and really not getting much. I did get one on the hook. But I left too much slack in the line and it 
left the hook out of its mouth. And uh, it was cool because it jumped out of the water for me and then threw the hook and it's gone. Sean doesn't believe me. That's okay. I wouldn't believe him either. But uh, just beautiful out here, as you can see. Um, We'll probably stay here for a bit longer and then head down to the lake downstream of the tunnel. After a while, we moved downstream to the lake area and things started to turn around. There was a spot with a nice sandbar you could wade onto with access to the outflow from the tunnel section. I also switched back to a standard five weight fly rod since casting long distances was not an issue at this location. Come on, baby. Does not want to come in. Come on, buddy. Nice little rainbow. Yeah, he's pretty. You can see that. Lip hooked. After a long day, we headed back to camp and cooked up some great burgers on the scottle as well as a fresh salad on the side. We spent another evening by the campfire and talked about the day's events. Man, what a beautiful place this is. For breakfast on our last day, we decided to use up our ingredients from the previous day before getting ready to leave camp. The Temple Tusk Scottle is such an awesome cooking system as you can leave food on the side to stay warm while you cook your main ingredients in the middle under the burner element. We made sure to leave the camp as clean as we found it, including taking the fire pit ashes with us, which can be easily removed off the stainless steel screen of the pop-up fire pit. We then proceeded to pack up our things, including putting away the aloe cab tent and awning.
All right. Well, it's the end of the trip. What do you think of the, the property, Sean? Oh, property's awesome. I mean, it's just truly amazing. It's just eye candy everywhere you look, and uh, the sound of the river, can't beat it. And the weather we caught, great. Great place. Yeah, we lucked out. Uh, it's been raining really hard when Sean showed up at my house on Friday. Like, we had major hailstorms and thunder, lightning, but we came out Saturday, and it was just beautiful. And um, as you guys see, and this is just like, like Sean said, this is eye candy. It's just a beautiful, beautiful river, River Canyon. Um, but yeah, man, it's been fun. We're going to be doing another trip in June, guys. We're going to yep. be doing, uh, well, we're not going to keep that for a mystery night now, but let's just say yeah. I can pretty much guarantee you we're going to catch fish at the next couple spots we're going to yeah. go to. We'll and, have fun. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we're going to have a good time. Probably first week of June, we're looking to be having a trip. So, all right. Well, thanks yep. for watching, everybody. As I always say, hope to see you on the trail someday. See you later. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps this small channel grow. Thanks again.